which we would love to see. But, you know, again, when we pray in God's will, we always say, Thy will be done, Lord. Not my will, but thy will, your will, be done. Not my will, but your will be done. And I think that's the, you know, the, the important thing. Just thinking about healing and deliverance, uh, I just spent some time watching um, uh, deliverance, uh, a deliverance minister, I guess, online on YouTube that delivers people online. So if you're watching, he does a deliverance over the people viewing, say, on YouTube, which I was fascinated with. I just, a, a friend, uh, just uh, one of our listeners who, who's a commenter mentioned that uh, this guy doesn't get that many views and he's healing people and casting out demons. And so I was taking a look at uh, at all that because I'm very interested in healing and, and I have, uh, here we have more what I would call a prophetic healing, but we don't really mention it by name. Then there's deliverance ministries that, like, say, Rich Keltner is involved in uh, Strike the Head of the Serpent in Long Island, which you can actually go physically there, and th- there's a deliverance of casting out demons. But see, I've been through deliverance, and I've been through um, <clears throat> uh, different stages of healing, and uh, and I've seen people get healed in the strangest ways. You know, again, not expected, but then the Lord moves. I've seen people um, that operate in the healing gifts, uh, you know, do kind of a combination of, you know, a binding and and then a loosing of uh, healing spirits and a binding of the sickness and casting it out in Jesus' name. In a sense, because I'm talking like this now, that, 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 you know, it's something that could possibly happen. I've seen, I've been involved in healings where there's no record of anything ever having been wrong, where there was like a stage four cancer, that sort of thing. And, and I've, I understand that because I've, I've seen how <clears throat> God doesn't just change, you know, the person. He changes the whole movie set. <laughs> You know, boom, here's a movie set where it never happened, right? Here's one where the cl- plane crashes into the mountain, and here is an alternative where it lands safely. I've seen that in healing, where it just, it never was to begin with, and doctors are going, I don't understand, there's no sign of anything ever having been here. Why are you here? You know, what, what happened? You know, and look back at the records, and we see tumors everywhere. What, what happened? It's like there never was one. And uh, they said, "There's this is not a process because it, it it obviously occurred immediately. It was there, and then there's other people who succumb. And people aren't ready for that. People that succumb, and they go, oh well, they should have. Mm. You see, watch out here, folks, because a lot of times, and and this is around. You know, I've been spent a good deal of time around healers over the years." And a lot of times, when nothing happens, no healing occurs. You you get, you know, the person gets blamed. Like, well, you have a spirit of of um, whatever of pride. You have a spirit of, you know, your 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 ego. You've got something that's blocking God's blessing. And then, the, but the person is ready, willing, able to receive a healing. And they're just doing the best they can to be there. But it, for whatever reason, doesn't take hold. Or they say a demon casts out and, and somebody, you know, say they go into a kind of a, a different voice and, and they talk like this, ah, yeah, yeah, start screaming. And then, oh, oh, thank you, I'm delivered. And then next week it's back. The heroin needle's back in the arm, you know, whatever. Okay. Um, you see, this is the dark side. I know. I can't, I can't help it. I, I, this is well because we you know, look, the most important thing of aspect of healing of uh, in in of all the walk in Yeshua in Jesus, okay? The most important thing is faith. Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Right? Now, there's a lot of people that read the Bible that have very little in the way of faith. They say, well, you're, 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 you're listening, you're not hearing. 
you hear it, but you're not really hearing. So the onus goes back on the person. The, some way or another, you're blocking the healing because there's something in your flesh is just, we need, I discern as, you know, and this is hypothetical here. I discern as, as, as with, with a gift of prophecy, I discern that you have a spirit of uh, resentment, rejection, trauma, alcoholism, drug addiction, prostitution, fornication, criminality, thievery, murder. And that's blocking it. You've got to renounce all that. Okay, I renounce it all. And still, I'm not healed. I'm sorry. Well, you're doing something to block it. As opposed to... Tough love, baby. As opposed to... um, For whatever reason... God is not my personal genie, okay? Just because I command it, I loose, I bind it, and I loose it, I loose the healing, and I bind the devils, I bind the sickness, and I loose the holy angels. The healing angels. Then there's a confirmation. Yes, I, I experienced something. Thank you. And then the patient dies. So you understand, you know, and this is tough for, for ministers, for pastors, for people that, you know, are kind of on the front lines doing this kind of work. And it's, it's kind of like, you know, in the secular world, you have psychiatrists where <laughs> this is a little bit close to home, but, all the time with psychiatrists, the patient commits suicide. Then they come in being suicidal. They haven't really committed suicide, but then they start getting therapy and getting treatment and unfortunately getting drugs. The next thing you know, they, they suicide themselves. The doctor, of course, it, it's got to mount up over time. It seemed to be a little more than a functionary, just kind of like aiding and abetting the suicide along. The same thing happens in deliverance ministry and healing ministries and prophetic healing ministries and different you know, prayer groups and laying on a hand ministries and all the different kinds of aspects that you can have. You have situations where it just seems like whatever there is there that is hurting and the person is ready, willing, and able and has faith Plenty enough. But you see, God's also dealing with that healer. Are you going to blame the recipient of that healing word? Are you going to blame the recipient for not being healed, that they're doing something to block it? But, you know, you because when you do stuff, it happens. Folks, I've, I've just got to be the word of caution here. Look. As healers, you're not really even that involved in it. (laughs) I hope you understand. You're being obedient too, but you see, you need healing as well. The healers need to be healed. Seeing, they're not seeing. Hearing, they're not hearing. It's not about you. And you know, as I, I and as I was watching various people do their the healings and stuff, I just started getting into that because of uh, well, just curious. I realized a lot of people were not really healed. And some were. Hallelujah. It's a terrible thing to seek healing and then feel bad, feel like there's something wrong with you. I deserve not to be healed, I guess. It didn't work. There's something wrong with me. I guess I'm not good enough for God. 
the ministers don't want to see me anymore because it makes them look bad because they're supposed to be, what are they, magic wand, miracle, uh, what, magic purveyors? No. God's will be done. And sometimes, I don't care what the circumstance is, I've, I've seen people healed just by standing there. even by walking by. I've seen people fail with every kind of external prayer. I lose around and all this hoopla. And I've seen that fail again and again. Looks good. Nice performance. Is, is that what we're going for, a performance? To cast out a demon does not require repetition. It does require a a person, both people involved, have to be in the will of God. Not their will. I was healed... I was in a hotel room that I had a very, very serious kind of pneumonia condition. Worse than that, actually. It was this weaponized flu thing. It was terrible. And I was feeling like I was going to die. I felt like I was saying to the Lord, okay, take me. It's, it's okay. And uh, I was led to open up a, a Gideon's Bible out of the little drawer. I turned to a scripture, and I think it was in 1 Thessalonians, but I, I can't tell you exactly which one it was because I was, I was having such a fever and things were very kind of hallucinating and things. And uh, I really just kind of read it. I, you know, I, I don't know how deep you go when you're... And um, that marked the beginning of the road back. In other words, I wasn't going to die. I was going to heal, and the process was going to take about a three weeks or so from that point, from that low point. And I was able to um, not pass on, but uh, then, then started going to the upside. And it took about three or four weeks, but then eventually... You know, because that fever, the way it works with the weaponized stuff is that the fever comes over you and suddenly goes to like 105 or something, and then it comes back down again. It's weird, you know, and the uh, it's all in the lungs, and I even broke, uh, you know, abdominal uh, muscle. Didn't get a hernia, but I mean, it was close. Uh, and that, that happened recently, too. It, it's happened over and over since, since it started, be, began. It seems to me like, and, and then the people of that time that went to the hospital to be, be diagnosed, they said, well, there's no, they don't diagnose flu or a pneumonia or anything else. It's just, I think, uh, yet a lot of people die from it, but then they don't report it. And it's a terrible thing, you know, really being here is sickness. Existing here is sickness. Breathing the air here is sickness. <clears throat> Being around other human beings is sickness. The existence here is a constant, or if you like looking at it the other way, existence here is a constant uh, progression of healing because we begin sick. The flesh is sick. People are sick in that people are not made so well that they can overcome diseases and different obstacles. They succumb here and there, right and left, over here, over there. Death is all around. The power of death is very strong. Or through war. Or through disease. They don't heal. They, they go down. 
or through calamity, tragedy. God, Isaiah 45, brings the, you know, brings the blessing, brings the curse, brings the good and brings the evil. Brings the tempest and brings the calm. Brings the death, brings the life. It's not just the devil that decides on death and then you intervene and then, you know, you're going to bring life. It's, it's not quite that way because the Lord has already an ordained time for each person's life and death. They've, uh, the Lord's already meted that time out. The Lord is all-knowing, omnipotent, omniscient, knows the time of your birth and the time of your death and all the things that will happen to you in that time because he is the Lord. <clears throat> the healing biz is, and I know there's a lot of well-meaning people out there, but see, I'm, I'm, I'm doing a healing right now on them. Number one, you cannot take it personally or blame the other guy, or blame the victim, worst of all, if they don't receive a healing just because you're praying. There's such a thing as arrogance before the Lord, which is my way, not your way, right? When I decide, not when you decide, Lord. That's why we always have to caution ourselves with, you know, if it be thy will, because it's how we, if it be thy will, Lord, let that healing go forth. I pray in Jesus' name to bind that sickness and loose the angels of healing and loose your healing power, Lord, on everyone who is listening. If it be thy will, in Jesus' name, amen. See? Now, people do write me on occasion and say they got a healing from this or that broadcast. And that this why it's important for me to bring it up is because, you see, I didn't know that. <laughs> <laughs> you see why that's funny I didn't know they got healed unless they told me I was unaware that I was doing a doing, doing, I'm doing and it's almost arrogant in and of itself doing a healing I was unaware of that and it happened anyway. Praise God, right? I know people have been told to just go stand over there in the corner of the shopping mall because somebody gets a healing because somebody was obedient. Something is bound, something is loose, something changes, and, and God deals with all of it at the same time in multiple layers. And so when that, you know, Job has his afflictions and his friends are giving him all kinds of advice of how he's blocking God's healing, <clears throat> he's doing something wrong to bring these afflictions about, it had nothing to do with Job. And one must resist the temptation to shame the person, especially the person with the affliction, for blocking a healing that the healer is legitimately bringing in Jesus' name. And we don't understand why in that case they didn't throw their crutches down and start doing a jig. You know, we just don't get that. Then, of course, it gets, you know, all of this gets, gets, gets cartoonized into, you know, this, this huge, you know, you've seen all these sort of, you know, big uh, <clears throat> stadium events of healing. You've seen all the Benny Hinn stuff and all the, you know, the showmen out there making a big show out of deliverance, a big show out of healing. It's all, it's all about healing, deliverance, binding, loosing, all this. is all day long, all day long, all day long. People are sick all day long. Everyone around me is sick, and I'm sick too. We're, we're the leper colony. <laughs> so we need constantly, constant healing to keep, I need to be healed just to get through the day, and then healed again to get through the night, and then healed again to get through the morning. I need God's intervention or I, I just can't make it. So it's a constant, every day, all day long thing in order to exist in a sick world. Right? 
10,000 to the left of me, 10,000 to the right, but I will not be afraid, for you are with me. I receive those holy angels concerning me that will keep me going, get me to finish my mission, because the Lord, when I was born, he set me on a mission. You know, son, this is your mission. It's got a beginning, a middle, and an end. And all the day long, and all night long, and every second of every day is the mission. Um, it will be perilous. You'll be near death at times. You'll be up at times and down at times. Whether you obey or you abound, it's all good in Jesus, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. It's going to be that kind of struggle. I pray that everybody is healed all the time. And in the main, they are. You have to be healed to be able to get up in the morning. got to be healed to be able to get to, uh, say, you go to work or you do whatever you're going to do during the day to sustain you through that day, to get you through and to get you home in one piece without the power of death robbing your life. The power of disease, the power of germs, the power of death, the power of uh, psychic vampires, the power of, you know, all of these things are going at all. Dude, gang stalking, you, you know, you name it, it's, it's out there coming for you. So we need a healing every day. We need protection every day. We need the Lord's hand on us every day. We need guidance every day. So what I'm trying to address today is the idea that sometimes we can undergo a, we think, oh, if I could just get over there and just get over there with that person or this minister or that person, I know I'd be healed. And then it doesn't happen. And then the person loses faith. He's shamed. He goes on a journey looking for someone to heal. To heal this affliction that just doesn't seem to be healable. And looks far and wide. Healer, 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 healer. I went through deliverance with the best deliverance minister on earth. And it didn't happen. They say it's my fault, so I blame myself. <laughs> and within that, <clears throat> tears become bitter anger at God. Fake ministers. <laughs> Fake healers. A healing's a gift, you know. Anybody can claim, but not a, not not everyone is effective. You know the healing, the the miracles that go on since, say, of the uh, in early church, and then of course the, there was there was Pentecost, and then the the, the great gifts of the you know, the greater works that occurred at uh, Pentecost for the early church beginnings as a as a modality of building the church. You know. No, Jesus may have gone, but he did say it's, but the power is here. The power and the come now the comforter is here, the Holy Spirit. And now we really have, right? And the church builds and time goes decadent. Miracles cease. Inspired words cease. Prophetic utterances cease. Everything becomes an exterior convention, you know, laying on of hands, exteriority. Uh, praying exteriorly. Uh, quoting scripture, exteriorly. Uh, having communion exteriorly. having an understanding of it all in an exterior way, yet denying the power thereof, because the power of the Holy Ghost, the power of God, is overwhelming and cannot be controlled by man and not fitted into a neat, nice little box called church, churchianity, whatever. <clears throat> it's going to go where it's going to go. 
where the people are praising the Lord, the Lord inhabits the praises of those people. And if the Lord moves, the Lord moves, and not, nobody's going to be able to, you know, interpret it right. It's going to be kind of chaotic. But the difference is, just like in the psalm that I played, Psalm 16, the difference is that it's if it's from the Lord, it's good. Good chaos. Good healing. Mass healing. Mass deliverance. Mass... De- but the Lord's got to show up. And God is not shy. Of course, God shows up. God is everywhere. Doesn't have to, I guess, show up. Like we think of showing up. God is there. What I mean is the power there. Sometimes it's, the answer is no. People get themselves worked up into a frenzy, and then, you know, and then these ministries get built, and then, you know, these. People keep keep on putting hope in something that may just be a <clears throat> a path of death, a path of fakery. So, and this had nothing to do with anything I saw yesterday. The people I saw were doing a great job. All that it's just the Lord put this on my heart to 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 get into because why I I, I guess. Because the Lord doesn't want to lose people due to lack of faith if they don't get a healing in the way and manner they believe a healing should be. A lot of times people get healed, they don't even know it. They don't even know it. I've gotten a healing just from talking to some a stranger. And I didn't then later I was like, wow. Direction changed. My countenance changed. The thing on my shoulder that was weighting me down changed. It all changed just with a chance encounter, a, a word from a nondescript person that's passing by in an airport, whatever. Um, it's unbelievable how great God is everywhere. So I'm there alone, and I'm thinking, I've got to go to the Emerald City because I need that healing. No, I was healed in place alone in a hotel room, feeling like that was the end. And thank you. Healed collectively, healed individually, there is no difference. A lot of people are alone and they just can't can't deal with other humans. Are they being blocked from healing? Absolutely not. No. No. We're not going to put God in a box here. God does what he's going to do. The Lord is good to heal the meek, the people that are... Trish? The people that are... uh... What do you call that? They're uh, shut-ins. To the people that are stalked so that their options are very... Boy, I understand this one. Very little movement you can do because of the you know of the you go outside and all it starts up again you know what I mean and there's so there's that and that requires healing and you know just begging the Lord every day you pray to the Lord please make a path for me Lord it's so hostile the environment it's just it, who can withstand it in all the ways you know there's myriad ways people are targeted it's it's a uh, kind of an amazing thing people get targeted on social media like facebook is just it's basically an ambush right um twitter is is somewhat of an ambush as well Uh, it's it's a little nicer than facebook let's say a little less personal i guess you know um it's no panacea you can get quite sick on Either one is filled with sickness, meaning stalking. There's a lot of stalking that goes on through algorithms that people don't realize they're being targeted for depression. And they get depressed, you know, certain kinds of people, people that would be, okay, Silicon Valley is, just let's look at it from the surface, and we're going to start kind of going into this. I I guess before I leave this topic, I'm not going to leave it, I'm just kind of caroming off a little bit, uh, 
Healing comes from God. You know, the, the, you, you, can, you can do a thing, but, you know, the, the increase is God's. You pray, and then the increase would be the healing. That would be God's. God provides the increase, the healing. Uh, the growth, the healing, the um, protection. If we could just understand this, that most all of us are protected by God all the day long and led. And, and we may not be totally conscious of it, but when we do get more, I mean, for example, the, the whole Facebook thing, the reason you've been able to, you know, continue in Facebook without becoming mentally ill, which uh, apparently a lot of people are becoming mentally ill from it. Uh, the reason if you're not becoming mentally ill is because God's protecting you. You know, God wants you there because that's your uh, modality of fellowship. That's fellowship and praising God. And that's the only way you can get together right now because of the hostility of the hostile, the hostile environment that surrounds us. You can't just go to a church or do, you know, they've, <laughs> you, I mean, you can, but then it, then it becomes another issue of, um, you know, being targeted, which this, this, this it's just a, it's, it's just a, uh, you know, like a broken record going round and round and round and round. Same thing happens every time, right? And and they, just like they, people that don't get a healing, that don't show progress, especially the church system loves to show progress. I I was gay and now I'm not, you see, because of Jesus. I mean, I'm not, I'm not mean to belittle it. I'm not, I mean to put it down completely, but I'm saying they need to have stories like that. I was on heroin, I was on the streets, and then now I'm healed. Or I was, you know, I had the spirit of uh, uh, horrible rejection and, and our destitution and, 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 and poverty and, and, you know, sickness. And, and then the Lord healed me. Here I am, and I'm the CEO of XYZ whatever, Inc. <laughs> and it's going really well. I got my life, and I got a wife, I got kids and everything. Yay, God, our God is an awesome God. And they start singing, you know. And, and, and uh, so the church is very keen to show people that have those kind of t- I was homeless, and then... I, I went to a Thanksgiving turkey thing or a free turkey, and they they uh, they took me in and they trained me how to run a forklift. And I run in the forklift. I got a family. I got a life, and I didn't have that before. Thank you, Jesus. You know, they put these people out and parade them in front of uh, the uh, congregation. They put them out in front. And they put them up there, and everybody feels real good about everything, and everyone feels real good about that that guy that was restored. I mean, some people they don't want in the church. The, the, the sins were not the right sort. Um, and then the people that are not having that, not getting that kind of result, which would be most people, uh, kind of you know get shuffled to the back or even blamed for blocking the, the great blessing that's going on here. There's just, we, we better come to your house and take an inventory of your house and your friends, you know, break bread and take a look at what you got there. And basically they start taking inventory of who you are and, you know, then, you know, start putting together a dossier <laughs> and they'll start tracking you. Uh, yeah, you see, you see the uh, El Problema, right? You see the problem. Um, it's, uh, and, and so you're, you, you, you kind of like intuitively onto this. You know that there's no place you can go now that's different. Every once in a while, you got something like Rich Keltner's uh, Deliverance Ministry and thing in Long Island. If you're there, you can go there. You know what I mean? And and uh, it's going to be a whole different thing. But I want to say uh, that's not a five hundred one c three situation, and that is also uh, the people around there are hostile toward that. And and uh, you know the uh, the 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 staid religion and religionistas in that area are not quite happy about that. That's put on on the weekends usually, and uh, so we would love to see that sort of thing pop up all over the country. Amen. And and I'll, I'll, and have the proliferation of we will see it. We're going to see more and more uh, street preachers and uh, you know and all that. But we have to understand, you know, when we start developing an orthodoxy of how it's got to go. 
what form it should take. Like I said, I've seen people go do a whole blowhard thing and they look like they're filled with the Holy Ghost and speaking in tongues and healing people and slaying them in the spirit and every darn thing you can think of. And nothing, no follow through. In other words, there's, oh, I'm healed. And then it back to uh, whatever the pattern was, back to whatever it was, quietly, you know, a month later. No one wants to put that testimony on of backsliding. And it's not backsliding, it's the person wasn't healed. The deliverance session did not heal that person. And they were very gung-ho and very willing and would confess anything. I'm this, I'm a sinner, I'm, I'm horrible, I've got the spirit of this spirit, I renounce everything. They do all that, but still it doesn't work. Okay, and the reason why is because we can't, <laughs> number one, God is no respecter of persons. Amen, okay? That's just like number one. God will not honor, in my opinion, this is now, this is my opinion, okay, just based on being around. Not going to honor any orthodoxy anywhere about any of this. This power that God will unleash, God's going to unleash anyway. So it's kind of like, you know, there's an eclipse going on and no one knows when an eclipse is, but you come from the future of the Connecticut Yankee story, right? And you, you tell people there's going to be an eclipse tomorrow. The, and, and uh, you know, the eclipse is coming tomorrow at noon, okay? So the sun will be blacked out tomorrow at noon. And they go, if that's not true, we're going to get you. Noon, the sun's blacked out. All of a sudden, oh my God, you're the most powerful sorcerer. You made that happen. No, it's going to happen anyway. So you got to watch out for that. You know, you got to watch out for these things because, you know, it just leads, I mean, it, it, it doesn't do any good. You 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 pray, you 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 set into motion those things. You pray because the Lord has you praying. It's not you all alone be reaching out to the Lord who's somewhere out there, distant beyond the stars. You know, Lord, uh, we ask you to. Uh, the Lord's right here. He's right here with us right now. He's right here. The Holy Ghost is right here. The Lord is right here. Everything about you is right here. Everything about me is everything about anything is about right. It's about right here. You're gonna heal them, Lord. Guide them, heal them, set them free in Jesus' name. Amen. Set us free, Lord. Heal us all. Done. Heal us all. Uh, deliver all. Thank you, Lord. Okay, you could have. Could you have a prayer that short? Deliver all. Cast out all demons and deliver everybody into, out of sickness in Jesus' name. Could you pray that and call that healing? Oh, absolutely. I've seen that many times. Where there was no fanfare, no show going on, right? No, not making a show of it. And then I've seen the big show of it uh, do, you know, have people faking this and faking that. I've seen every kind of configuration of this stuff, and I'm just saying, got to keep it on the up and up. What Lord loves is this, in my opinion, okay? It's my opinion. He loves a straightforward, just basic, honest approach. You know, you know you're not God. You know, your hands are open, and you're just like, how the Lord's led me to pray for you, you know, and, 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 or, or not even announcing it. You just pray for someone. You may not even know them. They might be on television. You know, or might someone you saw at the in the marketplace or whatever, and you just go ahead and quietly pray. You don't tell anyone. You don't make a show out. You just do it. And uh, that's that's something that the Lord really loves. It's kind of like in in our in our prayers and our char charities and our whatever we we're doing it's the more of it that doesn't put a light on us the the better you know you've 
give someone something maybe anonymously. You know, you you keep it quiet in the background. You you don't make a show of it. You you pray for people. You quietly lay hands on somebody and. You know, you quietly pray, and it's just like no mention of it again. Maybe you don't even know their name, whatever. But uh, you see the Lord, how he moves us from one to one to one to one without, you know, kind of under the radar. I mean, that's good. Uh, you also, you know, the people are trained to command demons to come out of people and all that. That's all great. That's wonderful, too. We command, you know, the best model for that would be Jesus. I always, you know, him, him. It's it's when the demon start is manifesting, which you know that could happen where the demon actually takes over the the, the whole countenance of a person or the the tongue of a person, whatever. Now you're dealing directly with that. Of course, there's no power, no right, no legal right that that demon has or that 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 in that principality anything at all. If the person is a believer in Jesus Christ and has that faith and that willingness. Uh, it can easily be cast out simply by casting it out in Jesus' name. Done. Next. So I like to get rid of witchcraft. I, I bind all witchcraft coming my way, neutralize it. I hand it over to you, and I hand them over to you, Lord, in Jesus' name for uh, for your will. Your will be done, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. Please set me free, amen. Good, good done. Okay, that took care of witchcraft for the day. Now what are we going to do? You would be surprised, well, you probably wouldn't, but, you know, it's surprising how many people don't have, and the reason they don't have a little prayer, please deliver me from, which, save me, protect me from witchcraft today in my endeavors, Lord, in Jesus' name, amen, and then I go about my day. You'd be surprised how many people don't, the little prayer like that just seems so insignificant to them because they're brought up in the church thing and they're brought up with certain, you know, mores, okay, certain styles, certain orthodoxies, certain ways. Man, you know, the, of course the model is, is, is the Bible, but God deals with people in different ways, right? That little prayer with faith, that, you know, after breakfast or whether before going to work, before going out into the world to whatever you do, uh, in my opinion now, but I believe God loves that. I believe God really loves that. The fact that you would take that 15 seconds and make a little prayer to, to keep you from the evil out there to protect you, and lo and behold, you were protected, weren't you? I've received healings from elaborate prayers that mention lots of things that go on for a while, and but I've been more successful with the small me personally, with the smaller prayer, and I and sometimes you know and of course we've been successful in twenty on twenty with praying in God's will. You know, when we get into God's will on twenty on twenty, when we're in that spirit, then we pray from that spirit. So we're actually becoming a functionary of God rather than an external uh, uh, requester of something from God. It's a big difference. And, uh, and, and we've seen that success. We've been witness to it. So that should, and so I have no change. I mean, that's the way it should be done. And sometimes people pray a small prayer, say a few words. I tend to go on a bit, you know, not being a showman, but really just... You know, I just kind of get wrapped up. Sometimes I, I, I don't have that much to say uh, because, like I say, when I rebuke witchcraft, it's like that. It it just depends, you know. The, see, the, the the problem is that people see a form they like. They like more the showy form, so they think that's the way to go. Not necessarily. Just give your heart to the Lord. Please save my mother, my father. Please protect them on their plane trip to wherever. In Jesus' name, done. So that prayer is just as valid as someone that goes on 20 minutes or whatever. So see what I'm saying? 
and, and there's nothing wrong with playing 20 minutes like 20 on 20 and going through all the different things that, that, that are occurring to you at that point too. I'm saying, you know, it's all good is what I'm saying. Too many people think, well, I've got to go to this guy for prayer because he's really a prayer warrior. Uh, no, you don't. Where's that coming from? If it's if it's a Holy Spirit thing, you know, to get together with somebody because of whatever. But but this person has a special gift; they can heal me, as opposed to what? You not being able to pray yourself, as opposed to what? You know, if it's if God has a different idea, you can go to all the the, the greatest evangelists of all time, and their prayers will not mean diddly. They'd be moot if it's not in God's will, is my point. How can you tell it's in God's will? Well, you see, that's called discernment, and little kids have that. I mean, but adults seem to have lost it. It's it's very simple. You know, you've you've gotta you've gotta be like, you know, just it's like being a being a kid, you know, and playing, you know, and you invent things and invent you you hear things and you you know, you're spontaneous, you meaning you've you you know you uh God can work with that. Sometimes the Lord will leave afflictions with us. A thorn in the side, if you will. And it's something we contend with until the day of our death even. And there's nothing wrong with us. There's nothing wrong with that person. That God has, has, has that it's just the way it's going to be. It doesn't mean that person is to be shamed. It doesn't mean they don't get to have a nice testimony at the church and tell them how great everything is, how great Jesus is. It, it, it doesn't mean that they're a failure. It doesn't mean they have weak faith. It doesn't mean they have some issue of pride or, or sin or something blocking the great healing of God. It means God's leaving that there. They're not to be shamed. Too many of these people have lost their faith and have gone to destruction because why? And that is possibly a personal flaw. That could be pride. Who knows? But they've, why has that happened? Because they weren't successful in being healed. So therefore they went, they, you know, and then they got blamed themselves. There's something you're blocking it. And then, you know, they, 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 they were out, uh, cast to the four wit, cast to the uh, outer darkness. Terrible thing. And this also happens with people that believe in the rapture and that they think the rapture should have happened already and that they should be out of here. And here they are and that they, you know, they start, uh, well, we had the same thing with the whole QAnon thing with, where, with people put faith in that. Of course, that's way different than the issues with God. What I'm saying is, People are not, you know, just because you don't are not a hundred percent well, doesn't mean that you you have like twenty percent bad that's unacceptable to God, or you're blocking it by by twenty percent because you got twenty percent bad in you or something. It doesn't mean anything necessarily. There's been plenty of healing, plenty of guidance, plenty of protection. So you know God's there and you've been a witness to it and it's and, and not only you but others as well. But then there's a couple of things that just stay there. Uh, yeah, well, that's true with everybody because that's emblematic of the human condition. If that weren't so, I guess you'd all fly around like angels. But you see, we tend to shame the system shames the person that didn't get the healing and doesn't have the big testimony for the next Sunday service. You see, it's it's their fault in some way, and they need to be in counseling. And usually, then they're put under mind control. You know, you do this, do this, do that, do this, do this, and then then maybe that'll lose God's blessing. It's like, oh, I see. You're going to go earn God's blessing now. You're going to do some works, something, something, or chant something. And that will finally do it. And then, of course, you know, usually the person is so disgusted, they just don't ever want to go back to that church again, and they go look for another church. 
or fellowship or whatever. Sometimes people just get tired of being around somebody that's progressing in cancer to death. And they just don't understand why God won't do anything. And they think, oh, that person must be evil. They're not receiving a healing. And, you know, a a lot of the... Talk to people that have been through a lot of deliverance ministry, you know, a lot of lot of deliverance prayer. And, you know, they say, well, I, I, it seemed I was healed, and then I backslid. The, the, the affliction came back after a certain... I went through it, and I thought it was, it was hallelujah, hallelujah, all the way around, and everything was fine. I was, I was... They told everyone I was healed. But then, look, I'm... I'm not, I'm... I'm suffering again. I'm sorry. The onus must not then be put on the. Oh, it's your fault. Oh, that's your fault. That you, you know, you had a blessing of God. Then you, you did something. You engaged in some sin or some thought process or something, and that blew it the the healing away. So there you are. You need to start all over again, as if you're the author and the finisher of your own healing. As if it's all on you. That that's that's more like Buddhism. It's your karma, man. You got to deal with your karma. Something bad happens to you. It's your fault. That's why I don't like about. That's that's why Buddhism is is bad, in my opinion. One hundred and one. If something happens to you, it's it's because in it, it, Buddhism is like this. The yoke of of existence is so heavy. Most people can't stand under it in Buddhism, so they become magical thinkers. You know, they start having bodhisattvas to pray to, and, you know, they invent all manner of things in Buddhism. They think they could chant Namyoho Renge Kyo or whatever else, you know, and that somehow their life will be snapping back. It's not true. It's a workspace thing. But, but mainly, and here's what the Buddhist does. Here's, what, here's how they shame you. All religions seem to shame their members. They'll say, well, this is your karma. You know, you got run over by that truck. Uh, you've got to work your karma out, man. <laughs> it's your fault. And so, you know, don't look to me to have any compassion to you because it's got nothing to do with me. This is your karma. You know, bad things happen. I just got fired. Oh, that's your karma, man. You got to work that karma out before you get another job because that's going to happen over and over because it's your karma. It's your fault. I didn't do anything wrong. No, it's your fault. It's your karma. You better go see some Zen master or something and figure it out. Right? And unfortunately, you know, sometimes ministries of Jesus, you know, get caught up in the forums too, you know, and, 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 and tend to blame, you know, See, see, a, a guy sticks his neck out, and he's going to be the the minister who's ministering the healing through the healing prayers and whatnot. And then if it's not happening, and if miracles are not manifesting, it's either him responsible or the people are still too wicked to receive it. But someone, something's wrong somewhere. No, nothing is wrong anywhere. There is nothing wrong. We are still trying to put God in a box and play like he's the golden genie that you'd rub the rub the lantern and the genie comes out and grants your three wishes if you're a good boy or if you're a good girl. That's ridiculous. Jesus meets you where you stand. You know, reminds me of the wild, wild west, the guy that, that finally just meets the Lord. He just guns down his 150th victim in Dodge City somewhere over a bet in a saloon. After playing with the ladies all night and everything else, and and he finally has this encounter with the Holy Spirit. It's like, oh my God, you know, I've been an assassin and and an awful, but, but you're calling me. Oh, and it just uh, suddenly the puts the six da- guns down and he goes, he picks up the Bible, he's on another track. Right, it just happened to him. You'd say to, that is impossible. That guy wasn't ready for that. He didn't. He should have renounced the guns and renounced the. The, the women and renounce the, 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 the drinking and renounce the, the murdering and re- then he'd be ready to be healed. Oh, really? 
Well, the truth is he just got healed like that. And there was no human involved. He just, just, this beam of light hit him, he said, from outer space or something. And the next thing you know, he was like completely, totally given over in the Holy Spirit. And his whole life flashed before him. It was like almost having like a near-death experience. And it was just a total all-encompassing thing. And he's never been the same since he was healed. Well, <laughs> we didn't have anything to do with that. Right. Yeah, you're, 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 so the, the biggest problem that uh, seems to occur out there is people seem to be setting themselves up between them, between the, you know, a person that they're so ministering to, and God, as if they're the ones who are going to loose the blessing or, you know, uh, bind the curse. <laughs> you know, and it's like, no, wait a second. It's got, you, remove the middleman. So I think this is uh, power to the people time because you see any of you, all of you can pray and all of your little prayers are precious unto the Lord. Any conversation, any regarding of the Lord, any inquiry of the Lord, all of those things the Lord loves. You belong. You may not do it like other people do it. You may not pray like other people pray. You may not have a form or a likeness that people go, oh, wow, you know, big anointing there. And uh, so this is uh, not really tough love. This is just basically uh, truth. And the truth should set us free. We should honor the little prayer of a of a child or a you know, uh, or anyone, you know, that's having an endeavor and they, they, they have a little prayer. We should honor the one with a big prayer. We should honor the one with a medium prayer. We should not form an orthodoxy of what's valid and what isn't. Sometimes I pray a real short prayer and people are like, is that it? <laughs> it's, that's all I was, you know, yes, that's it. If I'm being honest, that's it. You want me to repeat it a few thousand times and make it seem like it's a big, well, oh, it's real powerful now. We've repeated it a hundred thousand times. So healing happens where you stand. The Lord meets you where you stand. Yeah. Yeah, you're in your jail cell. Done a lot of bad things. You want to do right, but, you know, you just keep getting pushed back into it, and it's just this back-and-forth thing, and you want to be healed from it. Yeah, yeah, well, a lot of people do. And then one day it happens. Usually in a situation like that, it's someone that just totally gives themselves over to the Lord. They just they just are, it's either becoming a minister of Jesus Christ, a person that does, that just lives and breathes the gospel, or you're back to... That, that pattern again. It just, it's so there's a lot of people that look like the worst in life and they become the best at ministering and things because there's no in between. Like, there's no middle ground. It's either full commitment or nothing. And that's a healing too, you know, because if you're fully committed to Christ, you're not the same person. You're, you're not that person. You, day and night. And I've, I've met people who have left the, uh, those patterns behind and all that selfishness behind and, and just become, they're just really acknowledging. I think what happens to people, too, in healing, and especially when you know they make a decision for faith to, to get involved in ministry or different things like that, it's, it's always uh, that, that God is um, you know, moving that person. But, I mean, it's, it's, they may say, well, this is, uh, this is my pursuit now, and they don't really understand. But that's also a healing that that decision was made to do this, that, or the other thing. That's also a healing. And then a lot of times people are, you know, they, they, they stumble and fall during the day, but they get themselves back there into doing what God has for them to do. And it's not an all-day thing. You know what I mean? They're still struggling with sin and everything else. They're not perfect. You know, that would be like, that. how I consider myself. I'm not perfect. You know, but uh, I'm inspired to be better because I see the benefits of it. I understand why. And so that's a healing. 
to understanding why we would want to push sin away and and push selfishness away. Why? Because it's it's a it's a much higher quality of life that that is that it, that that. So I st- you start heading down that path, and that then becomes the healing that you actually you know take steps in that direction. I mean, with me, I love the Bible. I love the, uh, you know, the Lord. I've the only thing I have with the Lord that's been tough over the years has been feeling inadequate, feeling that I don't really measure up, or I'm, you know, seem to be, you know, have, have, I'm, I'm kind of living in my own world a lot of the time. People say, "Well, that's very worldly." You know, your music and different things. It's not exactly praise music. It's like, yeah, but it's not. It's not worldly either. I don't know what it is. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, but I think it's God's will that I do it. And, oh, no, that's not God's will. you got to say God and Jesus and hallelujah. Where's that? Well, I'm just doing it the way I do it. So I'm sorry. If I don't have an orthodoxical, an orthodoxy of form that is, that is uh, you know, that you would approve of, Maybe you know. So I mean, I've 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 encountered that very thing many times, and uh, too many times actually. And it makes me feel, you know, I just don't think we're, you know, as a body of Christ, I don't think we're get what I've talked about here today. I don't think we're getting it. Okay, I don't think we are understanding. It's crucial that we understand what I've been talking about, even though it's elusive. Agreed, it's a bit elusive. To know when you're in your own ego versus God's will, the discernment required and all that. And I just told you the story of someone that just got healed on the road. One guy got healed on the road to Damascus. I think you know who he is. Same thing. Steeped in it. He was steeped in it. He didn't get all cleaned up and ready and then receive. He got hit, wham, bam, boom. And then he just set off on another course. And that was that. Just like that. Just like that. No need of the approval of the Pharisees or the, you know, or the, <laughs> the scribes. No need, no need for the high priest to, 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 to sprinkle holy water in a blessing. No need of any of that. No need. No need. No desire. No need. No need. Just like that. Boom. And then he, if you go to tell the churches about it, they'll say, this is, this is the problem. If it didn't come through their church, it wasn't done according to their way, they won't legitimize your experience with the God. They'll say, you're still pending one. And uh, that's how they strip the Holy Spirit from you. Because that's the only way they can control you. It is a terrible, 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 terrible thing that people don't understand. You know, there is a mystery of Christ. There is mysticism. There is, um, you know, the, the mysteries. There's, there's the, the, these things we're talking about today are quite elusive. You know, they're very, someone might say, that, well, they're Zen-like. You know, well, they're not Zen-like. It's just, you know, showing all the different myriad, you know, I said myriad already, so I'm going to strike that. All the different ways that we could get in the way, uh, all the different ways we could anthropomorphize God, make it make God something of our own understanding, lower God from someone something we don't understand and that we're terrified of, to something that's familiar and nice and you know and, and, and but I'm the one you know I'm the quarterback here counting off the commands. Loosen that healing later. I'm the, you know, I walk by, they get he. Now, there is no I here. There's the I am, but there's no you. There's no, you know, person that's uh, wielding uh, the, uh, the power of the Almighty that's in a little box, that, you know, in a, in a little sled that they carry around uh, behind their horse or whatever. There's, it doesn't work that way because God is everywhere. And anything can happen at any time. And if you could, if you believe that, 
then I would say you're a man or a woman of faith because you understand that God could just move. Pick that guy out, That's that saluting, whiskey-guzzling, murdering, womanizing, whatever. You know what I mean? <laughs> Straight from the devil. He could take that guy, boom, change him. 180 degrees difference instantaneously. Oh, but did any of us have a hand in it? No. Well, it may not be official then. See? It's like, he can't go to a church because they're going to try to rob him. <laughs> him who was a criminal who isn't now. It's a... It's, uh, I've seen this. This doesn't just happen in, in you know, in, in uh, I mean, it's, it's, it's ironic that, that there's so much of this in, in, say, Christianity, that there's so many people wanting some kind of identity within it. I, I think the beauty of Christ is we lose our identity, right? We, we're all just, we lose our identity completely. And... uh uh, and, 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 and yet we, we, the, the, our identity becomes something eternal, something ineffable, because the name of God is ineffable. You know that. I mean, it's a, it's a name that nobody can really utter. We have an approximation, Jesus, Yeshua, Yahusha, Isha, Isho, various ways of saying but it's still doesn't you know it's 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 really almost a symbol for the actual name of god that is unutterable ineffable and also because it's eternal it cannot be translated into a three-dimensional time space uh continuum if you will which is not not really a continuum but more like a uh more like a laboratory almost that we're in you know, the laboratory to see, you know, that, that stuff happens to you and, you know, everything is a test to see if you'll maintain your faith, right? It's like everything in the world is trying to take your faith away. This is the biggest thing we face, you know, disappointment, you know, deaths in the family, you know, bankruptcies of the business, of, you know, the, the sickness and, and all manner of things are all seem to be designed to, to see, well, you throw that at them, well, let's see if they'll renounce their faith then. You know, it all seems to be about whether we'll stay the course or not. Staying the course sometimes is, uh, can include being mad at God, can include screaming and yelling at God and saying, that's it, I'm done, only to find themselves right back because they know they're home, right? And uh, again, the frustrating thing for people is they want a more reliable power. They call on God, they want it done now. And God laughs at them. It's my way, not your, you know, it's like the reason you're not going to have it now is so you'll learn this lesson. And are you going to start making stuff up that there were healings when there weren't, there are miracles when there aren't miracles? Are you going to get with the program, which is God's no respecter person? We just, we just hope to be in your will, Lord. We just hope to be there. We just go where we go and do what we do. And stop trying to analyze whether it's big or small, whether, whether we're making a home run for God or not. I'll never forget the John MacArthur thing. I mean, this he said this while we were in the church. We we went there looking for a, for fellowship, looking for hope. We went there with in a good, you know, eagerly, and and we we had every good hope that things would be okay, and you know, then it seemed to be just another time where God was showing me how many people are really for real and how many aren't. And then when John MacArthur was saying. And to me, it looked like, you know, he was having to be lifted up by angels. He couldn't even stand on his own two feet. He's saying something to the effect of, uh, I'm going to do, you know, I don't want to just be a broom sweeper in the new Jerusalem, you know, so I'm going to do everything I can do so I can have a secure, a good position in God's kingdom in heaven after we leave, you know, in, in the new Jerusalem after we leave here. And uh, that was it. I, I was out of there. Boom. I, I cannot sit at the feet of someone that would say such an idiotic and asinine thing as that. That person, that person needs help, and God bless him. 
God help him. That's that's all I can say. I pray the Lord heals that man, helps him, helps him along the road. But this idea that there's some sort of hierarchy, <laughs> you know, higher and lower jobs and things, it's 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 a uh, it's uh, as if there's better and lesser people. Now it's there's it's only one thing. See, with God, it's only one thing. You know, that's it. here. There may be many things and hierarchies and uh, lots of lots of like work hard and get somewhere in life. And the guy over there is not working hard enough, so you're gonna beat him. You're gonna beat him out. Competition, all that. That's all. I gotta leave that at the door. That's the same thing of you know this this guy that that invited me to the church. He said he had a vision of his father after death, and that the MacArthur people told him that uh, it was de- it was a demon. It was demonic. That it was he didn't see him again. He didn't he didn't pray to the dead. He just his father died and he had a vision. The father said, "I'm okay. Don't worry." But they they didn't take him seriously, right? They thought, oh, that's a demon there trying to, you know, see if you go there again and be tempted to keep searching out your dad. And, you know, they're going to keep feeding you with all this, you know. So there's, again, you can be delivered. You know what deliverance means? It means delivered into Christ. It means delivered into faith. Means your faith was blocked, but we removed these demons, and now you're in Christ. You know, you're delivered out of the world and into Jesus Christ. You know, that's the ultimate meaning of it. So, oh, I fully, 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 fully expect that, uh, that that there will be a tremendous revival and healing time uh, that will come possibly from persecution. Okay, I'm going to switch gears here because I think we've... I, I, want, I want to preserve this topic. And so if you want to cut the tape right there or if, you know, some of you, you want to just preserve that part of it and just put that out as another... Uh, t- audio, whatever, I think that was, you know, that was, I had no plan on even, I didn't know what, I, would, I had no idea why I turned the microphone on today, you know what I mean, I thought I was going to go till maybe Sunday, or, you know, I, I feel like we've had so many intense words, I, I'm like, Lord, really? And uh, so, you know, this this came, and it came, uh, you know, as Trisha said, sometimes it seems like I, I have notes, I'm going, I have it all mapped out on, on, and I'm going by the notes, and it's, I know, that's what's so strange, you know, that's, a, that's, hallelujah, that's a, that's some kind of uh, manifestation of the spirit. That's, that's a real thing. I'm, I need to know that's, ha- that there's a real thing too, because it's going to help me to, to, to have more faith, to be able to be a better person, but, um, better person meaning less sinful, obviously. Uh, uh, I know that happens. It's like when I'm doing these talks, and I, I'm just going to clue you into something. And I don't, I'm not afraid that it's going to go away if I say well, what happens here. But every time the microphone is turned on, it's like I'm going by a set of uh, research notes and, 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 and like a schedule. This topic, this topic, this topic, this topic, this topic, finish. And I can barely get it all in. You know, I, I talk real fast and sometimes, and then two and a half hours goes by, and I'm just barely finishing. I know people don't have time to listen to, to, to you know. A lot of people say, well, you should have a Bible in your hand and go by. And we, we do, uh, we do share scripture, but I do, I refuse to take on an orthodoxy of the the Bible thumping um, evangelical. I'm just not going to, you know, it's, it's, it's not me. I, when I'm inspired, I, I can get way into it. If God gives me, he says, do, do the entire book of Isaiah. I'm more than happy because I know the Lord would, if the Lord sets me up like that, he will give me interpretation. That will be something you probably haven't heard before. Uh, you know, uh, but, but, but I have no orthodoxy Bible, you know, whatever. There is no orthodoxy about any of these things. 
And, um, you know, I think one of the problems people have is that they, they think if they, you know, again, it becomes this external form of if you, if you, you know, quote enough scripture. I quote scripture quite often throughout the day uh, with people, and I'm, I'm very, very happy to, to publish, uh, uh, you know, inspired scripture because there are scriptures to get me through the day. My, my latest one is John sixteen thirty three. I tend to, uh, you know, the be of good cheer. I have overcome the world. I, I tend to carry that one around with me. And I read the Bible uh, on my own. And um I've been lately reading it on the iPad, which I, I prefer the book, but the book is so heavy with the big print, it's easier on the iPad that I've kind of felt guilty about that because I thought, that's, that's not the way to get Scripture. You need to read it for the book. You know, yeah, we need to have this form of whatever, you know. That being said, I've, I've, I've got to kind of move on here. Um I just hope that this was a blessing that uh that we can understand that you know the smallest to the biggest prayers they're all the same with God. The little kid saying God bless mommy and daddy going to bed. The Lord loves that. Especially when kids I need to live too. And so I'm going to look the other way on that but I'll okay reluctantly join just to to be able to to get along in the world and now there's a lot of people in that category the question becomes will they upon seeing Jesus drop their death grip on their own death because they're guaranteed death they're guaranteed hell right will they drop that and go to the Lord when the Lord reveals himself for a time here will they Will they? They must, or or God wouldn't be bringing this. I can't tell you when it's going to happen. I can tell you the way it's going to going to be reported. Suddenly, you know, there's a a thing that happened somewhere, and you know, some miracle in say Arkansas, or in North Dakota, or some you know flyover country, something out of the way, in some trailer park somewhere, and someone goes, "Wow, there was a healing." I mean, all these people got healed of. They all had this thing. They all had leukemia. They all, there was a cancer ward. There were kids. I can see the cancer ward where the kids just all walk out like nothing was ever wrong, as if there was no illness to begin with. Things like that. Oh, there'd be a hoopla. There'd be a big disturbance. Isn't that what Jesus is supposed to do? Create a big... Aren't the people of Jesus Christ supposed to create a huge disturbance? Aren't they supposed to be afraid of our prayers? Well, we know what to pray for now. Well, of course. I mean, now I don't think anyone would object to praying now that it's been reported that Assad has okayed the gassing of his own people. I think we would all, if we came together in prayer today, we'd all know what to pray about, wouldn't we? Because we would know that that kind of thing, if it leads to, uh, you know, bombing Assad and Russia retaliation and A plus B plus one and one. And you know what I mean? Just follow the bouncing. Yeah. One thing leads to another. That's right. There's only one one name. John McCain. You could call. I'm just going to I'm going to label it right now for the historians. That's McCain's war. Will we prosecute McCain's World War III? Hillary was all set to go with McCain's war. But he's the guy with the rebels. He's the guy, you know, and Obama promoting like ISIS and all that. You know, that's been decimated now. Are we decimating ISIS? Are we promoting getting Assad? Are we going to, what are they publishing that in the Times? Will Trump go along with it? What's Lindsey Graham up to? What are all these questions? I think that would consume our talk. We were to have a prayer meeting today. This is what, you know, I, I was not wrong and I was maybe early in bringing it, but this is what people would be talking about because this is where the greatest loss of life could possibly be. So we would want to pray for that not to happen so that life could go on and people could still have a chance. 
you know, because that's the greatest threat to life right now is the situation in Syria. So we want to pray about that because we would not want that great loss of of life that could ensue from any kind of World War III. You think World War II is bad. You know, another prophetic thing happened to me, you know, and I will say it's prophetic. And, you know, this was almost like a capital P type of thing. Uh, Trish, would you do me a favor? I need that uh, National Geographic on uh, the assassins. The assassins. Just want to talk about unintended consequences of an assassin by the name of Princip. And... uh, I don't know why I found myself reading this. One thing I find about older histories is that uh, they don't seem to have a political spin on them. I mean, there's kind of a spin, but it's not really as heavy as the propaganda today you get from the media. For example, the Wall Street Journal published Assad Do they really know that Assad gave the order to use gas? Okay. Mm. The House of Israel. Mm -mm -mm. And let me tell y'all Gentiles something. You don't have to be an Israelite to receive the blessings of Yah. If you understand who the true chosen children are and you support that, the Most High will bless you tremendously. He did it with Cornelius. He did it with so many others before us and before you that you receive your blessings, man. Just because you're a Gentile, that don't mean white. That means all different ethnicities. They understand what's going on. They understand truth. You are going to be blessed tremendously. You understand what I'm telling you, right? So what I'm wondering, I want you to understand something here. That's only going to be a small percentage of Gentiles that make it. Why don't you be a part of that rim and be a part of the Hebrew culture of the one third? Because the most high getting ready to rain blessings. And you're going to be right there with us. But we can no longer keep trying to uplift the two thirds because they're going to bring us down. And that's what Satan knows. Now, I'm not saying that to say this. When a young man get out there and he's flipping and flopping, hold him. You ain't got to take care of him, but just hold him. And to some help come his way. That's all you got to do. Don't be foolish and record his his t- demise. The most high can't stand a black man that make fun of another black man that's having trouble. Did you know that Yahweh being Yahweh for, forgave a harlot? She was considered a harlot throughout the town. And she touched the hem of his garment. And because of her belief and because of her steadfastness. The Most High forgave her for everything. Now, you know, Sam Cook made a song called Touch the Hem of His Garment. That's truth. That's in the scriptures. Throughout the town, they call her a whore. Literally. It's, it's more to it than it. I'm just cutting right through the sauce. And she believed in Yahweh being Yahweh. And he was walking. Okay. He didn't even see her. And she just touched his garment. Now, how powerful is that? And he, he trembled when, when she touched his garment because her belief and her faith was so strong, steadfast, right? And in doing that, he said, somebody touched me. And he looked back, he saw her crying on the ground. On her, she was kneeling. And he told her, because of your faith and your belief, everything that you have done has been forgiven. Woo. That's powerful. 